The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. My mind is renewed with the Word. Therefore, I'm thinking those thoughts that please my Father. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to Romans chapter 10. Romans, the 10th chapter. We're going to look at verse 8. Romans, the 10th chapter and verse 8. We'll read our way through verse 8 because tonight I'm going to be talking about how faith cometh by hearing. It is absolutely very, very important that we don't forget that faith cometh by hearing. And when we understand that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we will absolutely determine that we're going to hear what the word has to say with a heart that receives the integrity of the word. Now, people that understand the principle that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God also understand that fear cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the devil. That schism comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the devil. Division comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the devil. Strife comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the devil. Therefore, as believers in Christ Jesus, let's guard our ears and make sure that we hear the word of God consistently because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12 now of Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. Hallelujah. Now the Jew, of course, we recognize is referring to those that have a covenant with God through the right of circumcision and what God had promised to Abraham. But then we also understand that the Greek is representative of the Gentiles. That means those that are non-Jewish. And then we also understand from Scripture that from Jew and Gentile, we have a new people that are called new creation people, born again ones, all who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So God sees the world divided into three nations of men. There are the Jews, there are the Gentiles, and there are the Christians. Now here, let's read on in Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him, or rich unto all that call upon him. Here, verse 12 again. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. And the Greek stands for Gentile, non-Jewish, one who has not received Christ as of yet. God says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek or the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 
And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. The word gospel means good news of peace. Good news of peace also means good news of the shalom or the salvation of God, the prosperity of God, the healing power of God, the preserving ability of God. It, the word of God lets us know this is good news. And when the good news is preached or proclaimed, there is a opportunity for people to believe. You can only believe what you know. If you've never been informed of the good news, you can't possibly believe in the good news because the good news comes by way of those sent to preach. Now, all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ have been given the Great Commission. We're told to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Another way of saying gospel is preach the good news. Preach that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. Preach that he is the healer. Preach that he is the one who prospers us. Preach the gospel message that Jesus is good and he is the shepherd and bishop of all them that commit their souls unto him. We're looking at Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they that have not, verse 16, it says this, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Again, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, one moment, please. Sweetheart. Praise the Lord. We're televising from home, and because we're televising from home, we take opportunity to commit to answer the door when someone knocks unexpectedly. So my wife's going to get the door. And isn't it great that we can change and have real life home situations going on at home and still continue with the word of God. We're looking at Romans, the 10th chapter. I love it. Romans chapter 10, and we're going to focus on verse 17 because verse 17 is the title of our message. So then faith cometh by hearing. Romans 10, 17 again says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now notice the faith that he is talking about here is the God kind of faith. That means the kind of ability that comes through the power of God is able to be demonstrated when one hears the good news, hears the word of God, and then chooses to believe the word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're looking at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul, the apostle, who is the writer of the book of Romans, led by the Holy Spirit, is informing us that until the word is preached or until the good news is preached, faith will not be present. Faith is only present when the hearing of the word of God goes forth. That means what you hear is what your faith is going to have opportunity to be exhibited or trust in. If you hear the word of God, then you can have confidence, trust in what God has said when God's word is preached. If you are hearing the news or if you hear other things that people are talking about, but it's void of what God says, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of man in what man is saying. 
you're going to live according to what you believe. But what you believe is going to be framed and come from what you hear. This is so vitally important that people understand that the absence of the hearing of God's word is what's causing many people to suffer because you can't be blessed with what you don't know that God has accomplished for you. Meaning, even though the Lord has provided for you salvation, which means the ability to become right with him through accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's already provided healing for you for by his stripes that were laid upon Jesus back, you were healed. And through his death, you were considered as being made dead with Christ, as being made dead to sin. And when Christ was raised up from the dead and ascended up on high, God saw us buried with Christ. God saw us raised up with Christ. God sees us seated together with Christ at his right hand. And therefore, the information of that and believing that and embracing that can change your life. But if one never hears their identification with Christ, if you've never heard that Jesus Christ came to give you life and life more abundantly to prosper you and to cause you to be able to enjoy a healthy life, you can live a life that's filled with trouble, challenges, suffering. And eventually people go to hell because they've never heard that Jesus came that they would have life and have life more abundantly. This is the reason why our Lord and Savior told us, go into all the world and preach the gospel, preach the good news, cast out devils. Why? Because devils won't be cast out unless people hear that the good news of the gospel provides for people being set free from demonic activity. We can walk in freedom. We can walk as people who have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. People are going to live always according to what they hear. That means if people keep hearing about COVID, 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 then they're going to eventually investigate it. They're going to eventually structure their lives to accommodate it. They're going to think about it. They're going to talk about it with others. They're going to begin to change their behaviors to address an invisible enemy because they've heard that an invisible enemy exists. And then seeing the results of it allows for people to say there must be something to what they've heard. Because after all, how can you explain what's going on with these people who have had the impact of this word called COVID? I'm saying that people are always going to live according to the words they hear. And therefore, God informs us. Hear his word, receive his word, and allow his word to be that which governs our actions, our speech, and the way we talk with others, converse with others. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now let's turn over and look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to see that in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, God talks about faith and what it has been able to accomplish in the lives of those that he has mentioned here. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 1 and we'll skip our way through Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We'll begin at verse 1 and we'll find out that God says that through and by faith, these activities were accomplished in the lives of those whom he will acknowledge. Now, if faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then that means all those who have had God to move in their life and have made changes in the way their circumstances were uh, addressing them, it has to be because they heard from God, his word, believed what God said, and then the changes took place. 
faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or we could say it this way, the God kind of faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, there is what's called natural human faith. And when I say natural human faith, I'm talking about conversation that people have, exchanges of words that are void of what is written, but yet people are talking all the time, but they're not including in their conversation what is written. Consequently, that kind of conversation is referred to as natural human conversation or natural human faith becomes available. People who engage in natural human faith oftentimes do things because they trust in what they have seen others do, what they have heard others talk about, and therefore they believe because they see the results of history. But when we talk about the God kind of faith, our confidence has to be because God said it, then even if I don't see it, it will manifest and become like God said, because I trust God. And since I trust God, I'm going to prepare my life. I'm going to agree with my mouth. What God said is so. And I'm going to make my plans to line up with what I've been informed about. God's word produces the God kind of faith. And those who trust in the God kind of faith or the word of God will act on what God has said. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Now notice, God says Faith is the subject here in Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2. So since faith is the subject, that means the word it is referencing faith that he defines as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God's word has materiality. God's word has substance in the realm of the spirit. That's vitally important because Jesus would say, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And Jesus said, the anointing of God is upon me because I'm anointed to preach the gospel to those that are sick, those that are poor, those that are captive, those that are bruised. He was referring to in Luke, the fourth chapter about the anointing is on me to proclaim the word of God in an audible way, because the word proclaimed in an audible way would make changes in the lives of those who embrace the word because God's word is substance. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means God's word in and of itself has its own credibility and has its own facts to show that what God has said is certainly so. So people who say, well, having faith means I'm just going to run around and jump off a cliff in blind faith. Faith does not mean that you're blind and that you are just to believe in anything. No, you're to believe very, very specifically. And what is it that you're to specifically believe in? What God said. So when God speaks, you receive his word. And where he doesn't speak, you don't make up a, uh, a word for yourself about it or become a gainsayer or try to make up something that God didn't say because God is very, very specific and his word will cover everything that he speaks about. Here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it, that's faith, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Notice the invisible, audible, spoken word of God makes things that we see and do appear. But the things that we see and the things that do appear 
being made from that which is not seen. So our confidence should always be in the spoken word of God. Because the spoken word of God makes things, holds things together, is the responsible reason as to why we who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ can say, even though I don't look outwardly like I'm a new creature, but inwardly I know I've had a transformation. I'm born again. I have a new nature. Even though outwardly it does not appear, but one day it will appear. But you'll have to trust that what is not yet apparent on the outside will become apparent given time. So here we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. I love it. Enoch stated to the father, I please you. And God said, your conversation is a right or your conversation is correct. And I am pleased with you. Enoch, come to me. I'm going to talk with you myself in heaven. And therefore, Enoch was translated. Translated means he was translated or moved from earth to heaven, even in a physical body. Now, how could that happen? God acknowledges that his word can translate a person. We know that Philip was translated in the sense, Philip the evangelist, he was on his way to proclaim the gospel. And after he preached to an Ethiopian eunuch in the book of Acts there, and he baptized the man. And as he was leaving the man, Philip, the evangelist, was translated and found in the place called Azotus. And when we say found, I mean he wasn't lost, but Philip got a Holy Ghost expression. He got a heavenly transport from God the Father, who can easily do that through his word. Now, it's very important that we have confidence and have trust in that and understand that because all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ should be looking forward to the day where we will be translated. We will be transported. We will be caught up together to be with the Lord in the air. That we who believe on him are looking forward to his appearing. We who have received the word of God should be acknowledging the same thing as Enoch. Lord, I please you because I have Jesus in my heart. Lord, I please you because I agree with your word. Lord, I'm going to act like your word is so and, and governed my actions and my speech and my thinking in line with your holy written word. Now, when we talk like that, God says, sure, you're right. Even as he told Enoch, sure, you're right. Let's read on further and find out about some things that faith will accomplish. And why is that so important? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, and we'll look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now remember what we talked about, how that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. What if we use the definition of faith with the understanding that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? What if we use that verbiage in verse six? I'll read it this way. But without hearing and hearing by the word of God, it is impossible to please him. I'll say that again. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh and by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, but without faith, or we could say, but without hearing and hearing by the word of God, it is impossible to please him. 
For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, if God says it's impossible to please him without faith, then being a just God, a holy God, a right God, he has to make faith available in order for people to believe. You can't believe in what you've never heard. Therefore, God sends forth those who are to proclaim his word so that people can believe his word and receive results. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember with the woman with the issue of blood, how she said within herself and she said with her mouth, if I just touch the hem of Jesus garment, I shall be whole. Well, do you think that she had heard that touching of the hem of Jesus garment would make her whole? Absolutely. We know that in the Gospels it is written that people came to hear and to be healed. And as many as touched his garment were healed. What I'm telling you is, is that this woman believed what she heard and she decided, I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to do what I believe others have done and I'm going to have healing administered unto me today. And her faith is what brought about the change in her body. In fact, Jesus said when he saw her who had done this thing, done what thing? Who had released her faith in what the word of God declares about Jesus being the healer and the power of God was administered unto her even though Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. This woman got her need met because she exercised her faith. Now, how did she exercise her faith? Remember, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This woman spoke in line with the word of God, that it was God's power and God's ability and God's desire for his people to be healed and made whole. And this woman said, I'm going to receive my healing today. And when she made that statement, she agreed with the word of God. Jesus is the living word made flesh. And Jesus was the the manifestation of the will of God incarnate or in the flesh. And the woman said she was going to receive her healing that day from the word of God that she could touch. I love the fact that the woman agreed, even when we read in scripture in the Psalms where it says God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. This woman said, when the word comes to me, I get close enough to him and I'm going to touch him. That word will heal my body. And she received a healing. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Any promises you see from the word of God, you can believe it and receive it and claim it as yours. In fact, it's necessary that you do that because your confession is what activates the power of God to work in your life. And what some people suffer from is that they never speak the promise and because they don't speak the promise then that promise can't manifest the power of God in their life faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but faith is released or we could say it this way faith is activated and has opportunity to manifest by one agreeing with the word confessing the word and allowing the God kind of faith that's in their heart to change the circumstances that they're dealing with. Now, God told us that it is impossible to please him without faith. Another way of saying that, and we're looking at Hebrews 11:6, it's impossible to please God without hearing his word. Wow. That is tremendously powerful when you hear that in your heart. It is impossible to please God without hearing his word. It's impossible to have faith and, and please God if you don't hear the word of God. So that means the quest, the desire, the pursuit of every Christian should be, I'm going to hear the word of God. When I hear God's word, faith is present. I'm going to agree with God's word, confess God's word, and act on God's word. And the power of that word will manifest in my life, and I'm going to have my need met.
I'm going to have my hopes realized and fulfilled. I'm going to have the power of God to change the circumstances of my life. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11 and God goes on to describe how that there are several people that had changes in their lives and life circumstances because they chose to hear what God said, believe what God said, and operate in concert with what God said. Notice in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Now notice in verse 7 again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, Pay close attention to this word, see. Observe, view. Look at this. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. That means Noah had God's warning given unto him audibly, but Noah had never seen anything like the devastation of the world before. Consequently, Noah, if he was going to be prepared for what he was warned about, was going to have to act in concert with what God had told him. Can you imagine God telling Noah there was going to come a flood and the whole earth would be flooded through rain, but yet Noah had never seen rain? The earth was watered by the mist that would come up. And therefore, it was like a tropical paradise. But Noah was told that there would be droplets, there would be storms that were coming from the heavens and up from the bottom of the earth. Wow. Noah believed and trusted in what God said. And consequently, Noah received the blessing of obedience. You should always have this confession. If God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. If God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. We could add one more point to that. If God said it, I believe it. I'll act upon it. And that settles it. I like to put that I'll act upon it. Because if you just hear and don't act in line with what you've heard, then you won't be the recipient of the blessing that comes by way of obedience. If you're willing and obedient, willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Why did God warn Noah? Noah was warned because it was certain that the earth was going to have a flood. But Noah didn't just say, thank you for warning me, and I'm just glad I know, and I'll just rest in that, and I'll just go ahead and die like everything else that's going to die. No, Noah said, now that you've informed me that there's going to come a cataclysmic flood into the whole world, what would you have me to do? And when Noah said, what would you have me to do? God gave him specific instructions on how to build an ark. And we still have evidence and proof of this ark today. I know it may sound really different. People have said, well, that story can't be real. But the Bible says, by faith we understand. And it is by and through faith that Noah built this ark. Because Noah obeyed God. He and his family were saved and he obtained the righteousness, or we could say it this way, the title of one who's right with God because he simply obeyed what God had told him to do. Let's read on further. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. We're talking about faith cometh by hearing. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Circle or highlight the word obeyed. See, when God speaks, he doesn't just inform you so that you can say, I heard from the Lord, and that's it. 
He wants you to cooperate with what he said, believe what he said, act upon what he said, because what he said he will do. He will bring it to pass. And your compliance with it and your willingness to agree with it puts you in position to receive the benefits of obedience. Notice here the Bible describes Abraham as having heard what God told him to do and what he would promise to give him. And Abraham, it says in verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 11, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, here's the word, obeyed. Highlight that word. Underline that word. Don't forget that. Because when you obey what God says, even if it doesn't look like it's possible that it could take place, but you're willing to obey what God said, you position yourself to become a recipient of the manifestation of the power of God. God's power is in his word. God's word produces results in the lives of those that receive it, that believe it, cooperate with it. We could say it this way, that hear it and obey it. Now, because Abraham obeyed God, we have even to this day, and this is centuries, thousands of years later, we have to this day what's called the Abraham Accord. Why? Because Abraham was a man that chose to obey God and a whole nation called Israel has been formed by a man who has said, I will obey God and prepare for a nation of people that God said he would bring through us, through me. When I say me, Abraham was referring to his posterity. Now let's read on further. I told you I'd skip around a little bit here. Hebrews chapter 11. And we'll look at verse 28. Hebrews 11 verse 28. I know we're skipping around, but it's good because I want to get to a point about faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Verse 28 of Hebrews 11. Through faith, he kept the Passover. This is referring to Moses and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them by faith. They passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. That means those who were in the day of Moses, when they attempted to do what they saw the people of God doing, the Jewish people doing, as they walked through the Red Sea on dry land, the Egyptians said, well, if you could do it, then we could do it because it's just a phenomenon. The land is now dry and the sea is held back. We'll just do the same thing. I want you to understand that those who have faith can do things that those who cannot do that have no faith. I'll say that again. Those who have faith can do things Whereas those who have no faith, they can't do the same thing. They can't walk on the dry land with the waters of the Red Sea being held back for them. Why? Because the waters of the Red Sea were held back by faith. And those who have no faith have no protection from the phenomenon or from the protection that God had given those who believed him. The believer is a pleaser of God. The unbeliever is not pleasing to God and God has no obligation to protect the unbeliever. Now, God is good to all. The sun is shining on all. The rain rains upon all. God has given us an opportunity to exist on this blue planet called Earth. I love it. However, those who have faith will experience the power of God working in their lives and things are going to work out for you that when others say, I can do the same thing, I can just talk my way into it. 
Well, if you don't trust in God's word, then you're trusting in what you see me do, but and others do love the Lord, but you don't have the same protection and guarantee that those walls of the Red Sea will be held back for you. So Christian, it's necessary that we preach the good news to people so they can have confidence in the good news and have the results of the good news. Let's read on a little further. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Now, it's, it's what I was talking about earlier. And that is, those who believe will have protection. Those who believe will recover. Those who believe will have evidence that God keeps his word. But those who believe not, they may have a lot of smugness. They may have a lot of confidence in their own abilities because they see it being done, some supernatural things being done for the believer. But God said here that the harlot Rahab, she did not perish with those in Jericho like those who did not believe. Being an unbeliever means you are without protection. A non-believer does not have the same confidence that a believer has. And where did the believer get their confidence from? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. I want you all right now to agree with me in faith. And that is, I want you to say, Lord, I trust that your word is bound to my heart. And I have chosen to confess your word and live according to your word. Repeat after me, those of you who have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say this, Lord, I acknowledge you, Jesus, as being born of a virgin. Jesus, I believe you were crucified and you died. Your blood was shed to wash me clean from my sin. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead and you are now seated at God's right hand. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I call upon your name and therefore I know that God is rich unto me for obeying what he told me to do. I believe in you, Jesus. Thank you for being in my heart by faith. Thank you for making me right with God. In Jesus name, Father, I love you and I'll live for you all the days of my life. All that are in agreement in Jesus name said, amen and amen. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10:9 and 10 that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness, and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Will you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spirit Food Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you. 
Be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www.myspiritfood.com. Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.